Hey, this is Chaz, and welcome to my world from my living room. Today, I want to talk about fashion tips for the modern man, finding your signature style, the essential wardrobe for every season, fashion faux pas to avoid, dressing for success, and investing in quality. So, sit back, relax, and welcome to my world from my living room. Finding your signature style can be a bit daunting sometimes, right? Some people, it's the way they groom themselves. For guys, it may be a beard that they may be attached to that may be their identity. Uh, some women, they may wear different things as it relates to what makes them themselves, whether it be a personal haircut decision, it could be the type of dresses they wear. For example, you see icons like Sarah Jessica Parker, right? Lenny Kravitz, Andre 3000, Harry Styles, all these people, they have something in common. And I think that that's them finding out what works best for them. For me personally, I would say my through line as it relates to my personal style always centers around a hat of some sort, uh, frames. It's unfortunate that, uh, you know, my eyesight is bad, but at the same time, I'm taking a personal approach on how I wear my glasses. So I wanna make sure that the glasses, first and foremost, fit me properly. Uh, and that they also kind of share a little bit about my personality. I'm very, very careful at, about names that I wear on my clothes. I don't tend to wear anything with a lot of labels or anything like that because, you know, someone's brand across my chest, unless it's something I've created, it's not my particular style. It's their brand. Of course, I'm wearing a shirt right now, but shirts that I wear that have letters tend to be ones that kind of have a message that still captures my personality and what I want to convey to the world. So some of my things that are kind of like my anchors and centerpieces to my wardrobe is, I would say accessories. You know, I love my bracelets, rings. Uh, I made sure that when I got married that I wasn't tethered to a ring that I didn't like. So me and my wife, we got this one of a kind piece from Lazaro. So shout out to Lazaro and Soho. And also just, you know, a couple of pieces that really kind of, no matter what you're wearing, you can go, you know, take out the trash or, or go to the local bodega and you could wear one or two of those pieces that still stand out that makes you feel comfortable. No one may ever see you, but you at least know that there's an identity that, that leads you, you know, throughout your life. You know, finding your look and finding your personal style, I believe, is very, very important. It's a thing that I feel has carried me throughout my whole life. When I was in Nashville for the 10 years that I was there, aside from being one of the only, you know, black guys that was in the social scene as it related to, like, you know, waiting tables, having a lot of musical friends, and being out and about, I was kind of like that guy. But what also was attached was my personal style. It was the fact that, oh, oh yeah, that's Chaz. Oh yeah, he's always dressed nice. And that stems all the way back to when my mom used to dress me. Um, I referenced that a little bit in another uh, podcast, but she really, really made sure that I dressed well, even when I was of age to be able to, you know, dress myself in my, you know, young teens. She made sure we pressed our clothes. We had creases, there were no wrinkles, any of that stuff. I still take that pride with me today. So that kind of helps me through my through line as it relates to my personal style. Now, there are some faux pas out there that I do not condone. I know that there's a sense of juxtaposition and there are some things that, you know, you can wear and it's kind of quirky and it's eye-catching, but you don't want to make an eyesore. And some of those eyesores for me personally are leathers not matching. For gentlemen, it's probably the belt with the, the shoes, for women, it's probably, you know, the purse and the shoes. Th those are just minor ones, but I think you know when you see some of those fashion faux pas, like a suit that's not tailored to you properly, that it falls off the shoulder a certain way for the gentleman. And, you know, for the ladies, if your blouses are, you know, a certain way, and you don't feel confident when you are wearing something that you know that is just not right for you, not for your personality or something like that. So. You know, faux pas can come in many forms. I try to stay away from them, and so should you. Dressing for success for some people is wearing a suit, 
to make sure that you're dressed for the appropriate business situation. Then when I take that socially, dressing appropriate also is important um, for the success of the way you dress, given the situations that you're, you're in. Say for example, if someone invites me out for say brunch or a social event where I, where I know a lot of people are gonna be there and it's gonna be somewhat you know, fashionable. And if you know New York, you definitely know that when you're invited out to events, people show up and show out. Speaking of which, New York Fashion Week is coming up here in New York. Um, and it's usually an absolute social media frenzy. I mean, people come out of the woodworks with some of the most outlandish, craziest, fun, interesting, creative sort of looks. And me as a photographer and how I merge that world is that I love capturing that. I love watching the process of how someone comes out into the world and how they feel about wearing what they wear. So when I do street fashion, it's really cool because you're capturing people at their peak. They may never dress the same way again. It's kind of like their fashion Super Bowl. <laughs> but there's one thing that really bothers me though. And I've kind of made mention on my social media page on uh, Instagram at Langley's Eye, by the way, if you're not following, you should. Um, I made reference to the fact that when people come out in public and they dress and make an effort to really, really put their best foot forward. And me as a photographer, I may happen to catch them in the street. I approach someone, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Oh my gosh, I love the way you look. Your vibe is crazy. I'm like, oh, can I get a shot of you? And they look at me as if I'm like some deranged lunatic for asking. In my mind, I'm sitting there going, wait, didn't you put this much effort to really look a certain way so when you did come out, so people would notice? So now that I notice, I'm like the crazy guy, right? Okay, yeah. But I must say that Fashion Week, everybody wants their photo taken, believe me. I started when I first moved here to New York. I wasn't a photographer. It wasn't until my friend Mange, whose handle is Key Style, check him out, great fashion street photographer. He photographed me and thought I was someone worth photographing. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is that moment that you see in the magazines and on social media where people take pictures of their outfits. And I was so new to the whole New York isms of it all. And then I started learning how this whole thing works. And through other photographers, I, you know, once I became a photographer, it became a moment where I really kind of understood that this was the time to shine. So dressing for success in different arenas happens all the time for different people. But your success is measured based on how comfortable you are in what you're wearing. Investing in quality also means different things to different people. Some people know where to splurge and really kind of spend that money on those big ticketed items that ultimately become some of their centerpieces for their wardrobe. Say for example, for gentlemen, it may be that Rolex watch. For women, it could be that purse. It could be that Louis Vuitton. It could be that, you know, that burka bag. It could be some of those things that really kind of anchors their whole outfit together. Because maybe if they missed somewhere else, that's kind of like the great elixir that covers the multitude of sins as it relates to your outfit or your wardrobe to kind of go, oh, okay, they're in because they have that piece. You got to know where to spend that money too. Because for me personally, when I moved here 16 years ago, I used to be famous for the high low, right? I get that one piece. If it's in the wintertime, I get that one jacket that everybody knows me for or can kind of expect me to wear uh, whenever they see me, or like those hats, right? I'll spend money in those places because I know they're evergreen. I can wear them all the time. But then I'll wear, you know, at least back then, I was wearing, you know, H&M jeans, you know, or something like that, or, you know, a Zara top, something like that. And I still do, that, do some of that still today. But high-low, meaning being able to buy something cheap that kind of is the center of the wardrobe, but spending the extra on some of those bigger pieces that brings it all together. So spend where you feel that you have the most value that really kind of gets back to the center of your personal style. 
At the end of the day, no matter what you wear, make sure you're comfortable, confident, and you're, you're being yourself. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this podcast. This was fun. Uh, it opened up a little bit of the New York side of my life, of how fashion and style kind of go hand in hand sometimes. But it's finding the center of your personal style that really makes you you. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>